Ah, the Keychron K6. This has been my daily driver keyboard ever since its review. And I mean, that's because of the trifecta, right? 65% layout, wireless, and hot swappable. This thing is like, mm. my setup has never looked this clean because aside from my headphone cables, which no one is going to take away from me, I mean, this has been the next best thing, especially, and I am especially in love with the 65% layout. So much so that this is actually my second one because as I told you guys in the review that I was going to, I went back and customized my first one just to see how much it would take to actually get it to the next level. And as it turns out, didn't take all that much. So in its review, I told you that the K6 was a little bit too loud for my tastes, not extremely, but it could do with something to dampen that sound profile a little bit. And I tried O-rings with it, but that just like destroyed the experience, too mushy and unpleasant. Plus there was a lot of unused hollow space inside the case. And since it isn't that much of a heavier case being all plastic, that was definitely not helping with the sound profile. So in order to combat that, we are going to need to lube the switches, clip and lube the stabilizers, band-aid mod the PCB and add something to insulate the inside of the case, which is going to be foam in this case. Now that last part you could do with magnetic tape, which would also add a little bit of heft to the actual case. And this is thanks to an actual comment on the review of the K6, but I ended up going for insulating with foam material because my main concern here was to dampen as much of the sound as possible. Now, full disclaimer, before you go trying to do something like that with your keyboard, this is a time consuming process, even if you're good at it. So if you're not a patient person or you can't get yourself, you can, can't bring yourself to meditate and use this time to gather your thoughts or just relax with a pair of headphones, a nice tune, a nice album to listen to, and you know, just go with the flow, you might end up coming out of this process with hatred in your soul. Just saying, you've been warned. Now, first order of the day is organization. What you're going to need. Well, you're going to need at least three or four bins or pots to be able to deal with all the little bits and pieces that are going to be scattered all over your workspace. Then you're going to need lube. In this case, I'm using, and I actually recommend using, grade zero Crytox 205 or any other dialectic grease level uh, lube that's quite viscous. A small brush, and if you don't have one yourself, do like I did and borrow one to you know use since you know you don't have one. You need band-aids or anything else that would substitute a band-aid, a switch opener or a pair of tweezers, which is what I actually used for all my process, a cuticle cutter or an X-Acto knife, clippers or a sharp pocket knife, anything that you can be precise with while cutting small pieces of plastic, a pair of scissors and EVA foam or any other material like that. So first, take apart your entire keyboard. Keycap switches, PCB, base plate, the works. Now, we could start from anywhere, but I would just suggest when, you know, start from the inside of the actual case with the EVA foam. So just cut it to size, fitting all the different little spots, making sure that there's enough holes and spaces for every little screw, button, switches, pins, and obviously the battery cables. Make sure that nothing is, you know, squished in. Then there are the stabilizers, easy clap. Just separate them, cut the little legs that poke too much from underneath, lube the center pylons on all sides and the actual housing from the inside, lube the ends of the wires, and then just put it all together again. Cut small pieces of band-aid to place exactly where the stabilizers sit on top of the PCB, and that part is done. And all of that together is actually the easy stuff. So now that that's over, it's time to start attacking the switches. To open them up, push the pins on either side and carefully disassemble them. Each switch is comprised of the base of the housing, the top shell, the actual stem, the springs and the metal contacts inside, which we are not going to touch. I'm just telling you guys that there are that there's that stuff inside. Do not touch them, leave them be. Now first, you paint the insides of these shafts and the outside of the center pillar on the base shell with a thin coat of lube. And the thin part's important because if you use too much, you're, you can mess with the way the switch feels, but more importantly, it could make the lube actually leak from the switch into the PCB and then you can have problems with, you know, contacting stuff, which can be solved with like 90% alcohol, but you don't really want another process 
process to go through after you're done, right? Then you want to loop the springs. And there are a couple of different methods that you could use. One of them being the obviously easier than the others, which is using a plastic bag, throw in the springs, a little bit of lube and shake it all about to the tune of your favorite song until it's, you know, an even coating. Or you could go and one by one paint the tops and bottoms of every single spring and or apply a thin even coat on across the entire thing, which is the process I ended up using. But before I actually started with the springs, I realized something. There was another aspect of typing on the K6 that I wanted to try and fix, which is the fact that I like a little bit more heft, a little more actuation force needed to type on my switches. So I ended up going back to my Kaihua linear switches, the silver ones, and took them all apart to, you know, switch up the springs because the springs on the Kaihua switches are quite a bit tougher than the ones on the Gaterons. Now, okay, springs done. Now you loop both sides or all the sides of the stem of the switch and place them on the spring that's being, you know, held up by the bottom housing. Now, if you're using switches that are either tactile or clicky, actually painting these two legs on the switch might kind of ruin the feel or make it not as pronounced of a, you know, tactile bump or click. So just be careful not to, you know, ruin the feel that you want to from your switch. Okay. Now all that's left is to paint the inside of the shafts on the top part of the housing, push it all together and voila, you're done. Well, do that 67 more times, then you're done. Yeah. Now as painful as the process sounds, I actually enjoyed it. It was calming, it was soothing to, you know, just put on my headphones, listen to good music and just go through the journey. But truth be told, if this whole thing didn't yield results, I would have been pissed. But thankfully, the board went from sounding like this to sounding like that. So much smoother, so much softer, so much thockier, it's tight. The new sound profile on the K6 is much better than the original one because it's quieter, at the same time being heavier sounding and much less intrusive. But I gotta say, the one change that really took it to the next level for me in the feels of the typing was exchanging the springs inside the switches. That made a huge difference. But as for this process, I do need to remind you guys of one thing. This isn't a one time only deal thing and you're done. As time goes by and you use your keyboard more and more, you are going to have to reapply lube to your switches at some point. Because as you guys know, not every single key on a keyboard gets the same amount of use, especially if you're a gamer. These four keys are definitely going to have much more use than everything else. Now, is this modded version of the K6 the quietest sounding keyboard ever? No, of course not. Linear switches with films, perhaps a heavier set of keycaps, a different build on the base plate, and definitely heavier and thicker cases would make for a, diff a deeper sound, possibly more controlled sound profile. But I'm really happy with the way that things have turned out so far with the K6. Plus, as a bonus, this white keycap set, which by the way, hasn't been released just yet. So I'm going to have to talk to you guys about it later, but this thing actually compensated the lack of, you know, vibrancy on the lighting on the K6 because the actual fonts are more open. They're bigger and heavier looking despite being clear and quite elegant. So it actually helps with illumination as well. So another win. So in the end, on top of being an excellent value for the build and the feature set, despite or perhaps because of the room for improvement, the K6 is an excellent candidate for modding. Unless you're dead set on using a custom cable, because this left side connector definitely won't make stuff that much easier. But then again, this is wireless. Why would you go for a wireless keyboard if you wanted, you know, to use a cable, right? Either way, that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of new stuff coming up and 
Leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual if you're feeling like it. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Gus and I'll catch you guys later.